everyone! It's Liz the Frugal Libertarian and I wanted to talk to you a little bit about how my family has been affected by the Affordable Care Act in a negative way. Not positive at all. Most libertarians don't like the Affordable Care Act. That's something that seems to be quite universal. We don't like the idea of the subsidies. We don't like the force that's involved. You have a gun pointed to your head saying, get an insurance policy, get an insurance policy, and it's kind of a joke. Um, the Affordable Care Act is not some kind of grand scheme that's nice and kind and gets health care for people. It's a mandate that you must purchase insurance from a private company. It's basically large-scale corporate welfare. It's a money laundering scheme. It was invented as a way to take tax money and give it to the health insurance companies under the guise of, well, it's for this person here, so we're not really giving you the money. But then that person can only afford to be on a plan which that insurance company will never pay out on. So what's happening? They're getting tax money on a policy they'll never pay a dime on. So every month they keep getting payments and payments and payments from the government on behalf of someone else. That's money laundering. That's exactly what it is. My husband had a policy through the company Aetna for about five years. And it was a per policy that was purchased directly from Aetna because neither of us as adults have had benefits under an employer. So we have always gone straight to the company and purchased policies because believe it or not, before the Affordable Care Act, you could do that. And keep in mind, I have a neurological condition and I was able to do that. So pre-existing pretty bad condition, even though it's rare, so they kind of were confused about it. But, um, <clears throat> yes, so uh, you were able to purchase insurance even with pre-existing condition and not getting it through an employer. You could buy it from the company itself. Um, my husband's plan was incredibly inexpensive. It was $143 a month. It had a $5,000 deductible with a giant butt. The only thing that went into the deductible was like hospitalization and emergency care and things like that. He had a copay for doctor's visits, he had a copay for prescription medications, he had copays for some other specific things. Um, and he had a maximum pocket um, out of pocket amount for e the hospitalization and all of that. So if the bill hit a certain amount, then the insurance would cover all of it. It was an awesome plan. He had the same doctor for about a decade. He liked her. Then, I when I was pregnant, and knowing my son had to go onto my husband's insurance plan, we got the letter stating that his insurance was being canceled due to non-compliance. Basically, it did not meet the standards the government said it should. My husband's plan was even made cheaper by the fact, by the way, that he used it so infrequently that they used to send him refund checks at the end of the year. So it even cost less than that per month if you counted in the refund checks. But yeah, it was deemed non-compliant. So then my husband got thrown, like everyone else, and my son too, on top of it, into the healthcare exchange. Connecticut's healthcare exchange, Access Health, is a joke. It is the most group of most incompetent people on earth. Seriously. None of them can answer a question. They screw stuff up constantly. And somebody decided the middle of this last summer to go into the computer, physically remove my son and my husband from their insurance plans with no notice, no nothing, nothing. No warning, no notice, no nothing. And then whoever did it, great person that they were changed our address in the computer so that even if they had mailed out a notice to say you are now without insurance, it would have never gone to our house. Which made, by the way, getting it fixed even harder because the address I was giving them as our address was not what matched the computer. It has been a nightmare. Dealing with Access Health has been a literal nightmare and it's made even worse by the fact that according to Connecticut, according to the state government, according 
to the governor's office. Access Health Connecticut is not part of the state government. It's not a government office. It's not a government branch. According to them, it is quasi-government, which means they're not responsible for it, which means you have any issues with it, you got to go to it directly. There's nobody overseeing it in the government that you can talk to. Can you freaking believe that? That came from the governor's office, FYI, Governor Malloy's office. So it's been a nightmare. One of the things people don't realize about the healthcare exchange, it doesn't give you options. It tells you what you qualify for, and that's the end of it. Connecticut has, or had, two different state insurance systems. The first has been around long before the Affordable Care Act, and it's called Husky. And there are se several different versions of Husky. Some that have partial payments, some that are no payment. That's basically Connecticut's Medicaid. You then had the insurance company, the state of Connecticut, set up figuring it would be so easy to manage and pay for and it'll work perfectly, which is now bankrupt. That was called Healthy CT. If you qualify due to your application for either of these options, you weren't given another option. So basically, if you qualified for Husky, you had to take Husky. You could not reject Husky. Whatever version of Husky it said you should have. So the idea of improving choice is a joke. The issue with Husky, just like all Medicaid programs all over the country, is it's very hard to find doctors that will take it. And my son, is on it and has been on it because again went into the exchange filled out the form we have no choice do we that was the only option we were given and i can't stand it and like i said they've kicked him off of it twice now he's two years old once a year they kick him off of it i have to call up scream and yell and it takes weeks to get it fixed my husband, because it was the only option the computer said he had, ended up with a healthy CT plan, which then when they went bankrupt, he got forced back into the exchange again. But even that, he was kicked off of for no reason and had to scream and fight and fight tooth and nail with the people to get his plan reinstated. Because they were saying, well, the companies, we're not allowed to put more people back onto it. We're not allowed to take out new policies. And I'm going... It's not a new policy, it's an old policy, and he should have never been removed off of it, which means he is still a current customer, or should be. And it was a nightmare. They're a nightmare to deal with. Like I said, Husky, it is so hard to find a doctor who will take Husky. Most, it, they, it pays so little that the doctors don't want to accept it. Find the pediatrician we really wanted our son to go to. He took his first appointment there and we really liked her. It turns out she doesn't take Husky. So when he ended up on Husky, when he was no longer on the Aetna plan, when the Aetna plan was canceled, we had to find a new pediatrician. And I, I don't even know how many I called trying to find one that would take him. The only reason his pediatrician took him is because I had the recommendation of two current patients who are students of mine. So they took him because it was like, well, we don't want to look bad in front of our current patient who's recommending you. Here you go. You can come into the practice, but don't tell anybody because we're not accepting Husky people. So that's what you deal with. I see for my medical condition, five, I had to count. I see five different specialists for my health problem. Um, they each do different specific things, but they are the doctors I see on a regular basis, five. Now, how many of those do you think would accept a Husky plan? Because I asked, just to ask. One. And some of them are specialists that there is no other specialist in the area for me to take, like to go to. I have to go to that specialist. There's no one else who will treat me. So my condition is rare and not a lot of doctors have even heard of it. So I don't have much choice. And he doesn't take it either. So I would be paying him out of pocket 
because I don't have a choice. What am I supposed to do? Not go into my specialist? Like, it, it's terrible insurance. Terrible. Every person who sits there and says, we need universal Medicare, has never been on Medicare, has never actually had a discussion with doctors about Medicare and saw how few it is. There's a reason people complain Medicare is so expensive because all the people on it go to the emergency room for an ear infection or a sore throat instead of going to the doctor and then we have to pay medical, you know, ER medical costs and it's so much higher. There's a reason for that because no other doctor will take them. So they have to go to the ER because the insurance is terrible. It's awful. It's not real insurance. And that's where we come into the big kick in the face that is the Affordable Care Act. Insurance isn't care. Insurance doesn't guarantee care. I have needed an MRI for two years. My Aetna plan wouldn't let me get it. And I'm now on a different plan, finally, and now I can get it. It didn't increase, having Aetna didn't increase my care, did it? No, it decreased my care. When you are no longer the person in charge of your care, because you're not the one paying for it, you don't have a say anymore in the care you're getting. Everything that happens to you, every every bit of care you get, is regulated by a third person who's doing the actual payment of said care. And that's why it kills me every time I hear someone talk about, well, I got insurance and I haven't had it because I've never had it through an employer, or I have a pre-existing condition and I finally have insurance thanks Affordable Care Act. When you point out people like us who have been legitimately harmed by the Affordable Care Act, who have been harmed by the health care exchange who have been forced into terrible insurance. Um, my husband now has, oh geez, I don't even remember which company now. The plan is bloated, it's expensive, it's like $400 a month, it has a massive deductible, he can't go to a doctor without paying into the deductible. It's terrible insurance and that was the only thing we could get that we could afford. It's just a nightmare. It's a, such a nightmare. And it, it, we even were sitting here saying, we'll just take the fine, except the fine is gigantic and we can't take the fine. What do, we, what do you do? What do you do? I hate the way they always say, well, this many people have insurance now because of this. Yeah, because you've got a gun pointed to their head. You're saying, get the insurance or else. You know, yeah, when you point a gun to people's heads, you'd be surprised what they do to comply with what you're asking for. Got a gun pointed to my head? Okay, I'll go do that. You're not giving people choices. You're not opening options. You're demanding they take it. You can't be surprised that the people you're demanding to do something do it. It's just been awful. Like I said, and, and I... My husband actually, before the Affordable Care Act, because, again, his insurance, he hadn't used it in so long, it was still less, much less expensive than these other plans, but we were saying, can we do this cheaper? And we discussed, why don't we get you a catastrophic plan, so in the event that he is in an accident and has to go to the ER, or in the event that he has cancer and needs cancer treatment, something like that, it'll cover it. And we take, you know, though I think when we were pricing them, that would be like 50 bucks a month. So I said, we'll take another 50 every month and put it into a health savings account in your name, and we'll have saved $43 every month. And we were saying this would be perfect, because like I said, and then use the health savings account to pay, if he wants to go to the doctor, pay out of pocket. If he has a prescription, pay out of pocket through the health savings account. We had this whole plan set in place, and then the Affordable Care Act happened and catastrophic plans were non-compliant and you would have to pay the fine if you got one. So that's when we were, for like I said, and at first we thought, okay, well his Aetna plan is compliant because they weren't canceling it and we were kind of going, okay, we're good, we're good. And it wasn't until the 2014 when ever all the compliance issues kicked in that we found out he wasn't going to have it anymore. So it's just been an absolute nightmare. And I, I understand, oh, I got coverage, I got coverage, I like it. Well, do you understand that there are people out there who are genuinely doing worse because of this law and that you don't care about us? You don't care about us. You're happy because you've got insurance. 
You don't care about those of us who are in a worse situation than we were before the Affordable Care Act. You don't care about the people who lost plans they liked. You don't care about the people who had to switch doctors. I have a genuine health problem and I do not have a primary care physician because the one I liked and I used ended up dropping my insurance after all this mess started and I have not replaced her. I am just the whole thing. It has been a nightmare. A nightmare. And I just... Uh, the people I know who work in doctor's offices hate the Affordable Care Act. I've known some people to lie and claim they work for doctors and then talk about how great it is and claim every doctor loves having Medicaid patients because they pay more than anyone else. And then I pointed out, oh really, they do. Then why, do, why isn't every doctor accepting them with open arms? Why is it so hard to find a doctor if they pay more than anyone else does? And then they had no response. Liar. So I get it. Politicians love it because it makes them look good. At least Democrats that run my state think it's fantastic. I can't anymore. I am so fed up with it. If Donald Trump actually destroys it, I'm fine with that. I'm fine with it. Let us go back to what we had before. Please. And again, I understand. Oh, you're, you're doing great because of it. Do you understand that there are people like me out there? Do you understand there's people like my husband and my son out there? were pushed into plans because they were the only thing they were given the option to have. Oh, they're talking about all these people in West Virginia that only have Medicaid. There's a reason they only have Medicaid, because the exchange didn't give them any other option. You can't act like they wouldn't have other options without the Affordable Care Act, because the truth is, they weren't given another option. That's something nobody talks about. I think because most people who are against the Affordable Care Act aren't willing to speak up and admit that they or a family member are or have been on Medicaid. But that's the truth. The exchange, when you sign up and you fill out the form and it spits back at you, you have no choice but here's Medicaid. It's either you accept the Medicaid or you refuse it and accept the fine. They don't give you another option. I'm emotionally drained right now. I cannot wait for the Affordable Care Act to go. I can't wait. Hopefully we can get the old plan back. Have my husband and my son on it, because that would be fantastic. Then they could go to the doctors they want to go to, not the ones that accept what they have. Ugh. And maybe we can actually get a decent deductible and actually have doctor's visits included, because right now, my husband's plan, absolutely not. Anyway. This is Liz, the Frugal Libertarian, talking about frugal and libertarian health insurance. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.